let's talk about banning ideologies <laughs> and opinions. Obviously, I am a liberal right out front, but I am completely against the idea of banning bad opinions and bad ideologies. And yeah, that even goes for Nazis. Don't ban Nazis, because if you ban them, then, well, they just take it as a reason to be winning. I'm gonna pick you up. <coughs> yeah! Roll your snoopin' around, you goofy baby! When, when you ban an ideology in the end, especially if it's an extremist ideology like Nazis, all you're going to do is make them think that the world's against them and that they must truly be in the right. Because that is how those people think. If you start banning them, they're going to just assume you're an evil other that is really legitimately trying to kill them out. What are you doing? Little shit! And that even goes for, like, ideologies that are actually good, in a sense. You're not going to beat the, what the fuck, ideology out of someone. It's, it's just not possible. And I see a lot of this stuff going around, particularly on Tumblr, <laughs> where they, they go on to say, the original people who fought against Nazis, they started by actually physically fighting them in the streets and beating down the ideology, and, and that's why we never had a Nazi uprising up in England, because they physically fought them and beat the shit out of their ideology. And now, where has the biggest problem with the actual Nazi ideology? No, it's not America. It's actually Europe. <laughs> Like, most of the Nazi stuff I see is predominantly all about Europe and from Europe. <laughs> Germany, you, you don't see it quite so much, partly because in Germany it's actually illegal. <laughs> and plus, it's taught differently in Germany, and it's kind of a very long spiel on the German teaching of it and everything. But, especially in Western societies, if you try to ban an ideology through, like, thought policing, or just like, you can't say that, you can't do that, you can't wear that, you're just gonna piss people off. It's just like, with little kids, when you have little children, if you try to shelter the shit out of them and ban them from wearing certain clothing, ban them from going out and drinking, banning them from hanging out with certain people, then the minute they have the ability to do so, they're gonna fucking do so. Except for you're taking this and applying it to the adult world. The adults, they already have the ability to do what the fuck they want. So you try to ban them from doing that thing that they want to do, think that thing they want to think, they're going to think it more. They're going to do it more. And they're probably going to be more radical about it. It's just like the sheltered kids. Usually when you take a sheltered kid and they go off to college, they do a shit ton of drugs, a shit ton of alcohol, and get into all sorts of fucked up shit. Because they couldn't do it as a kid. <laughs> because people were saying, no, you can't do this. So they go off and do it harder than they would have done it in the first place. And that's basically what you have happening, especially with the Nazis right now. I know I'm talking about the Nazis a lot, but they're what really the ones that apply most with this right now. <laughs> or at least they're the ones everyone's talking about the most. Is people are saying, no, you can't do this. So they say that, well, we'll do this more because obviously it's triggering you. It's just the same as, as ex with Nazis again. <laughs> they will see any form of like ex excessive <laughs> representation of like people of color or Muslims or Jews, <gasps> anything like that, and they'll immediately see this as white genocide. And then you have people that will turn around and say, "No, you can't be racist towards white people. All white people need to die. All." All white people need to just go back to Europe. I see a lot of those kind of comments. All white people need to die. All white people are trash. All white people are racist. All white people are evil. Yada, yada, yada. That makes, you know, people who are white supremacists, who hate people of color, feel their beliefs even more strongly. Because if you're running around saying you hate all white people and you want all white people to die, the Nazi, no matter how you say it, is not going to think you're joking. <laughs> Especially if you ain't joking. And if you're not joking about that, you're a dick. Just plain old, you're a dick. 
my, my stance with it is if you wouldn't say blank, blank, blank because they're black, then you shouldn't say blank, blank, blank because they're white. <laughs> Both are fucking racist. Don't say either one. You're fucking stupid if you do. Not, I can't really stop you from it. But you're stupid. <laughs> Somebody stick in the pond at the door. You gonna come in or am I gonna have to let the door close on your face? The door's gonna close on his face. Fuck to the point. <laughs> and yeah, this is gonna be predominantly about Nazis, really, because Nazis are the, really the only ones that the liberal community, because I am a liberal, is actively trying to snuff out, ban, kick off of everything. No, that's that's the next point. Is Twitter? Good luck being alt right on Twitter. You will get your ass booted so fucking fast, it's not even funny. YouTube tends to be a little bit more fair. There's actually a lot of more right-leaning than there is left-leaning on Tumblr. But the left-leaning tends to get focused on more often. But it's a lot easier to find right-leaning people than left-leaning people on Tumblr, especially popular ones. And most left-leaning people on Tumblr are mocked. <laughs> I mean, YouTube. On YouTube. I'm not sure if I said YouTube or Tumblr, but I mean YouTube. Now, Tumblr, on the other hand, doesn't ban shit. So there are Nazis all over Tumblr. And this is a problem to all the liberals on Tumblr, because, of course, Tumblr is stereotypically liberal, even though, honestly, out of all the social media platforms, it's got the most Nazis. Like, holy shit, there is a lot of them. Like, it is a weird thing when you're just blogging and it's like, oh, I got followed by three Nazis. You're not going to find that elsewhere for the most part. <laughs> because Tumblr allows for it. So, of course, after Twitter banned all of the Nazis, oh, all the alt-right, the, the, oh, the evil white supremacists, there was, of course, the liberals on Tumblr started calling for Tumblr to do the same. And I'm sitting here like, nah, bitch. Nah, bitch. <laughs> No. <laughs> Let them stay on Tumblr, YouTube, Twitter too, frankly. If their ideology is that bad, then everyone with common sense will see it and mock them, and eventually they'll kind of drop it because they're fucking embarrassed. Because embarrassment is far more likely to get someone to drop their opinion and ideology than hate is. Because, like, honestly, like, if I feel like someone hates me, and I feel hatred, I'm, I'm not gonna stop doing something. But if I'm personally feeling shame over something, I'm far more likely to stop it. I mean, I don't know what the fuck I'd feel shame over personally, but so you making someone feel shame is way better at making them stop believing what they believe. And no, educating them is not going to do shit because they just think your education is wrong. So don't bother with that. It's a waste of your fucking time. <laughs> Says me, the person trying to, I guess, educate people. Yeah, I, I, yeah. A little bit of a hypocrite, but whatever. And at the same time, it's like, let the people have their beliefs. Regardless of how stupid and ridiculous it is, this is supposed to be the Western world. This is supposed to be the free countries. <laughs> people should be able to think whatever the sweet fuck they want feel whatever you want, say, can have some connotations, but, like, when it comes to, like, thinking, personal opinion, shit like that, you're, you should have free reign. It's supposed to be free countries here, like, come on. Like, like, thought policing is, like, one of the fucking worst things out there. If thought policing can get fucked. I don't even like that word, honestly. It can just get fucked. Like, fuck off to 20,000 different outer spaces. I don't care. It's stupid. <laughs> oh, Simba ran away. I was gonna show you the other bangle baby, but he bustered off. <laughs> and someone else is in the litter box. Anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. Thought policing. Fucking stupid. And that, that's one of the areas where I always find myself actually agreeing with the fucking alt-right is the alt-right seem to hate thought policing. Like, super fucking strongly, I've noticed. And I understand why. The main reason why seems to be 
the liberals are super strong for thought policing anything that has to do with the far right. So the far right hates thought policing because, well, they don't want to be policed. And plus, it's, it's getting to the point where there's a lot of rad femmes, you know, radical feminists, who see pretty much anything to do with free speech as horrible and evil now. So if you defend free speech and free thought, <laughs> then rad femmes will probably hate you. And people have a really, 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 really bad tendency to think rad femmes are the exact same as feminists and liberals, which is kind of infuriating as a liberal. I hate rad femmes so much. Baby again. <laughs> Bye. Or not. Or so. Whatever. Do you. Yeah, but even with rad femmes, you can't like try to ban them out of existence. It it just doesn't work. But at the same time, no one's trying to ban rad femmes out of existence. No one's even like attempting to. And that's partly because we live in a more liberal society, and since rad femmes take themselves onto liberalism, people go, It's liberalism. We must be liberal. PC culture. Ha! Which of course gets gets them left the fuck alone a little bit. It's the same with communism. Communism has a tendency of touching itself onto liberalism, so people kind of don't want to touch it so much right now, because they're like, but we don't want to upset the liberals. Which is fucking stupid. I hate communism on that note. Fucking hate communism. But no one's really trying to ban communism, and no one's really into communism anymore. At all. Like, I can't even think of the last time I even heard of a single communist. <laughs> Besides, you know, actual, like, fucked up leaders like Pol Pot and shit. You know what I mean. But at the same time, like, if you actually look for, please do not, <laughs> rad femmes and shit like that, you're probably just going to laugh. <laughs> like, nobody trying to ban them, no one tracing them out of buildings and shit is really just winding up with everyone just kind of seeing their opinions popped up on Tumblr and Twitter and going, ha, ha, ha. And then you have some, like, like Lacey Green, who eventually just go, you know what? This is fucking stupid! And, like, full of Lacey Green, more of a rad femme than anything else. Or she was. Crazy shit happened there, but whatever. It's just, like, feminist frequency, that's radical feminism for you. <laughs> Slightly toned down radical feminism that occasionally has a point, very minor points of anything. But... Horrible host. Don't like her. <laughs> but you see stuff like that, like, if you look up Anita Sarkeesian, I believe that's her name for a feminist frequency, you'll see more videos of people ripping her apart than anything else. You're not gonna find anyone trying to ban her ideology or anything. Hell, she gets to host events and stuff. Unlike the Nazis, because guess what happens when a Nazi shows up somewhere? People boycott it, and then there's a riot in the streets. Every time, pretty much. <laughs> But she's allowed to speak, and then people rip her apart for it. Make a mockery of it. People on the sidelines see this person getting ripped apart, and then they start to notice, hey, that ideology is kind of fucked up and stupid. I think I'll stay away from them. No one's banning or anything. We're just mocking it. And that's the thing. You can mock the stupid ideologies all the fuck you want. Just don't run around trying to make them illegal. <laughs> like, you can sit there and go, yeah, fucking stupid. Yeah, fucking stupid. And you're just a piece of shit. But no trying to make them illegal for their thoughts or their beliefs or their opinions. Because that's just going to make their beliefs opinions stronger and make this world less free. Because, frankly, I don't want it to turn into a fucking third world country. That would suck. And that's where thought policing and the ideology policing will lead is... First world country being a little bit less first world country. And that's the area where I think Canada has it a hell of a lot better than the States. <laughs> Like, a hell of a lot better than the states. I know the states like to, likes to say they're really, 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 really big on free speech and everything. But y'all are the ones that are, like, fucking making walls to stop people from going in places because of their ideology and starting up a riot because someone might be a white supremacist. Like, <laughs> down here, it's like... Hi? I mean, there's literally a shop in our biggest mall that sells Nazi merchandise. It's very popular, too. 
and no one cares <laughs> because it's not really that big of a deal here in Canada. <laughs> I mean, sure, occasionally there'll be like that mosque terror attack and occasionally there'll be like swastika graffiti popping up places, but it's usually like extremely minor and no one makes a big fuss out of it. It just gets painted over and people go on with their day. <laughs> Oh, I do think that's a little bit just with Americans being kind of extremist in every way possible. <laughs> I mean, you can't touch on a subject without America being a little bit extreme. Whereas Canada's kind of like the soft, subtle... sibling? The cat's licking the back of the computer. <laughs> that's why it is wobbling. <laughs> yeah. And England, ugh. Britain, UK... That, oof, oof. That's not in a good place right now. France, oof, 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 eh. Bad right now. But everyone hears about the States, you know? And sometimes I do wonder, like, if Canada were get the media coverage that the U.S. gets, or really any country get the media coverage that the U.S. gets, would things be more fucked up? That's a question for you. Would things be more fucked up if every part of the world got the same level of media coverage as the United States does? I think it probably would be. I think it'd be a much more of a shit show if we'd all be like reality TV stars. <laughs> He's still fucking looking at the back of the goddamn computer. <laughs>